Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at AMPT tasks and how you can use the task interface to handle recurring and one-off tasks within your AMPT applications. From the documentation, we can see that the task interface is available from the AMPT SDK. The AMPT SDK gives you easy-to-use interfaces that let you interact with a number of cloud resources from within your AMPT applications. Once you have defined a task, you can use either the every method or the cron method to schedule tasks that run periodically. This is great for things like ETLs or periodic batch calculations or anything that you need to run on a regular basis. If you need to run a task immediately or you want to schedule it to run at a future time, you can use the run method. This is really powerful because it allows you to schedule one-off asynchronous background tasks from within your application's logic. In order to define a task, you need to import the task interface from the AMPT SDK. Then, you use that interface to create a handler that runs when the task executes. Switching over to our IDE, we have a basic AMPT project already set up. We'll start the AMPT CLI by running AMPT in our terminal. This will spin up an isolated sandbox for us in the cloud. Connect us to real-time logs. And now we have a URL for our project up and running. In our index.js file, we've already installed the AMPT API module and with just a few lines of code have created a router that responds to an HTTP request on slash task. If we open up this URL and navigate to the slash task endpoint, it will load that route and return the JSON response to us. Now, let's actually define a task. In order to do that, we'll go back to our documentation and copy the task interface import statement and paste this into our index.js file. Then, to define a task, we'll copy this basic configuration and paste it into our index file as well. We've now defined a task called myTask. This task has a handler function that receives a task invocation event and then defines the code that we want to run. Let's include the event in the log here so that we can see what a task invocation event contains. Once we save this, we can open the AMP dashboard for this app and environment and it will show us that my task was properly synced and registered. Now we want to schedule this task, so we can use the every method and specify an interval like five minutes. We can also pass in an object, so let's add something simple like test true. As soon as I save this in my local IDE, it is instantly synced and deployed to my developer sandbox and registered by the app. We can see the scheduled task is here on the dashboard and we can run the schedule whenever we want so we can easily test it and make sure that it runs correctly. As soon as that task runs, it will return the results to our live logs in the AMP CLI. A task invocation event contains the ID and the execution ID that we can use to reference the task, the name of the task, the configuration of the task, and the body that contains the object we passed in. That body is very, very helpful because if we want to run the same task with different information, this lets us do that. For example, I want this task to also run every one day, and I want test to be false. When this task runs, it would receive test false, whereas the other one would receive test true. So this gives us a handy way to branch our business logic using the context that is passed into a task. Every and cron are great for creating predetermined fixed schedules. But if I want to run a task dynamically when something happens within my application during runtime, I can use the run method instead. Let's trigger our task to run when someone accesses the slash task API route we've already defined. I'll create a new constant named task result and await my task and call the dot run method. I'll also pass some data into the run method. Let's set on demand as true. You can pass whatever data you want here, including dynamic data from your application, but we'll keep our example relatively simple. Calling the run method will return the task ID that can be used to track the task's lifecycle. So we'll add the task result to our return JSON so that we can examine that output. We'll save our work. It'll get instantly synced and deployed to our sandbox. And if we go back to our slash task endpoint and refresh, we'll see the JSON result with the task ID in there. If we go back to our console, we'll see the console log of that task execution, including that the body was on demand true. A very handy feature of using tasks with AMPT is that their executions are all tracked and logged. If you go to the tasks tab in the AMPT dashboard, 
you can see which tasks ran, when they ran, how long they ran for, and all kinds of other information about each specific execution. You can also return information about a task's result. Let's update our task definition to return some information. Let's return success true. Now we'll trigger it again from our slash task endpoint. The task ran again and returned a new execution ID. If we go back to our task on the dashboard and refresh, we can see that the result is now being recorded. So if there's any information you want to store about a task execution, you can accomplish that by simply returning it from your handler. Another powerful feature is the ability to schedule a one-off task to run at some point in the future. This is great for things like scheduling follow-up emails and running delayed user-specific tasks. For example, if we want to run this task 10 seconds after it's triggered, all we have to do is add a relative time using either milliseconds or this number unit format, or we can specify a specific date and time using an epoch timestamp, a date time string, or a JavaScript date object. Now when we refresh this, it will trigger our updated run method, and when we look at the dashboard and refresh, we'll see that the task is showing it has been scheduled. If we expand the task details, we can see the execution ID, when it was created, and what the input was. That task should have run by now, so if we refresh, we'll see that it did in fact run. Now we can see the duration that it ran for, timestamps for its lifecycle events, and the result of the execution. Tasks give you some very powerful capabilities, and there is a lot more to explore. For example, beyond just scheduling tasks on a fixed interval like every five minutes, you can use the cron syntax to run them every Tuesday at 3 a.m. or every other day at midnight or every third Friday at 1 p.m. or whatever your specific needs are. You can get very fine-grained about when those scheduled tasks will run. You also have the ability to specify the timeouts. By default, a task will time out after 30 seconds, but if you need these to run an execution for 20 minutes or an hour, you can do that by passing in an object with the timeout in milliseconds. The task will automatically switch to the right compute behind the scenes in order to accommodate the length of the task that you need to run. You also have the ability to send progress updates from your tasks. This is particularly handy for long running tasks. Progress updates are recorded by the system so you can monitor the current status of any running task. And there is also an interface that lets you programmatically access information about tasks using the execution ID. You can use this to look up the state and results of a specific task if you want to manage that within your application code. Tasks are very powerful and give you a lot of capabilities within your AMPED applications. For more detailed information about tasks, check out the documentation at getamped.com docs.